Happy Hanukkah, everybody. Welcome, welcome. You know, here in Yonkers, we started Hanukkah on a high, both spiritually and physically. On a spiritual sense, we added more light. Uh, this year at the DPW, we had a beautiful menorah uh, set up. And uh, just as Hanukkah begun, we had a beautiful menorah lighting over there. The mayor came by, lit the menorah. And then the physical high was, we went over to Ridge Hill. And Ridge Hill, yes, it is on a higher elevation, but over there, somehow, we were able to convince the mayor to go into the bucket, be lifted about 20 feet high, uh, high up, and then come, come down to the light, the menorah. So Yonkers is on a high. <laughs> May we always be on this high and always be able to add both spiritual and physical light in this uh, wonderful, wonderful city, third largest city. Uh, Hanukkah is known to be, the, the, the name Hanukkah actually comes from the word of rest on the 25th. On the 25th day of the Hebrew month, says the Jewish people rested. Rested from what? There was war. Our enemies were out there trying to finish us off, try, trying to shut the lights off in a spiritual sense. And we fought. On the 25th, we, all, we, we were able to rest. Now, resting doesn't mean that we actually went to sleep. Resting means that we started cleaning up the temple. We're searching for oil. And finally, we all know the special miracle. We found one jug of oil. It lasted for one, it, that it would be good enough to last for one day and lasted for eight days. And that's the miracle. Every single day, we celebrate this wonderful miracle. Now, why is Hanukkah not called menorah? You know, we like the menorah. Let it be the theme. Or let it be called uh, donuts. Because we eat donuts, it has oil, right? On Passover, we call Passover. There's also another name called Chag HaMatzot, the holiday of matzah. So why is it that we choose to call Hanukkah, not menorah? Because Judaism teaches us a very important lesson. It's not your accomplishments. It's the time that you put in, the time that you put in, the effort you put into something. And the menorah is the accomplishment. But we call Hanukkah the resting. We worked. In order to rest, you have to work. We, re we worked so hard. We fought that war. And then again, we came to a point of resting. Uh, at this point, I'd like to call up our Honorable Mayor, Mike Spano, to share with us a few words. Thank you. And, it, and it will be a few words, but Rabbi, it's good to be here. I've been on the circuit uh, with him for uh, the last few days. Uh, over at Ridge Hill, he put me in a boom truck, sent me up about, it felt like 140 feet. Um, and then after he would, we were getting to the end, and he wanted me to throw the chocolate coins, the chocolate the coins into the crowd. But we would have to go back onto the ground, get those coins, come back up. I told him, no way. You put me <laughs> in the ground. I was staying there. And he goes, maybe the Senate Majority Leader want to come on? I said, yeah, OK. Go ahead. I don't think she's going to want to go in there, but go ahead. And but we, <laughs> you know, it was funny. Um, but it was also uh, in interesting, you know, um, Hanukkah is a, it's a, a wonderful season. I mean, it's a wonderful holiday. Um, we also know that in Hebrew, in Hebrew, Hanukkah stands, uh, or it stands for dedication, right? And so uh, there's one thing I can tell you about the rabbi. He's truly dedicated. And while he has taken me out his, under his wing and took me about the city, he's also um, educating and talking to people, speaking the words as they should be spoken, and, and, you know, and that's what's wonderful about our faith, you know, is that people um, need to learn, they need to understand, and they need to have, uh, you know, a belief system that there is something greater than just us, right, out there. And uh, that's certainly uh, inspiring for me to spend some time with you and, and just to, to be here with all of you and to say thank you. Uh, it's nice to be here, right? We have the menorah over here and the Christmas tree, right? <laughs> where we can all be together in a peaceful setting in this wonderful country we call America and just uh, enjoy each other's cultures and spend some time with each other. And so, um, happy Hanukkah on behalf of all the people of Yonkers. And, um, 
and know that that I went on the boom truck. I will never go up there again. But I, but I did have. I did feel closer to God up there, though. <laughs> you know, I did. So um, let's let's uh, let's move on to the ceremony. We're also joined with uh, uh, Councilwoman Cortez Pineda Isaac. Uh, who's with us, so it's good to see Councilman Mayor Isaac. And uh, you'll hear from our state's, oh, we have the Senate Majority Leader, who I almost got to go up in the boom truck with me, but. <laughs> so let me turn this back over, everybody. Thank you, and good to see everyone. Welcome to City Hall, and uh, we'll, we'll have some, some food inside. You know, I remember in our dormitory, there was always uh, a competition who's going to be able to sleep, uh, of the, who, who's going to be able to be on the top bunk bed. And the argument was, if you're going to be closer to God. So I guess, Mayor, that's where you got it. When you're up, you're closer. Um, at, at this point, we'd like to ask uh, Chuck Lesnick to, to come up and recognize everyone. Also, you know, we go back about 14 years. I remember across county, the first year when the chain link fence was still up, we're lighting the menorah. Uh, you know, back then, since we, we moved here, we moved to Yonkers about 14 years ago, and since then we're lighting the menorah. So the first one then to do it was uh, Chuck Lesnick. So please come up and share. I, I thought it was Judah Maccabee who was the first one to do it, not me. <laughs> but um, the mayor is absolutely correct about the ecumenical nature standing between the two trees. And in this country, we have freedom of religion, but that doesn't mean we have freedom from religion. That means we can all celebrate each other's religions. And just before I introduce people to acknowledge what the rabbi said about um, the, the oil lasting in a time of war, because we really have a, a real-time situation right now as Putin is squeezing the oil supply to Ukraine and to, to uh, a lot of Europe. And uh, you know, we Jews, we come from many places, but many of the people here can trace their roots to Ukraine, and it's just another uh, opportunity to remember that, uh, you know, just like Judah Maccabee, sometimes the underdog wins and, and with persistence, and if you're on the side of, of righteous, uh, you will prevail. So to my Ukrainian brethren, uh, I, I bring you the joys of Hanukkah. Uh, I don't know who's speaking, but Jim Nolan is our county legislator uh, to be recognized. <laughs> We have two state senators. Yonkers never had two state senators in all its history. But we have Shelley Mayer, our, our great friend, who chairs the Education Committee, which has been so helpful to, to folks in Yonkers. And of course, the Senate leader, uh, Andrea Seward Cousins, the first, first woman, the first person of color, the first person from Yonkers to be a Senate leader, I believe, in, in the history. Uh, and we have council members uh, Corazon Pineda Isaac and Shanae Williams. Breton, I don't know if you're representing um, the majority leader, but you're also on the Human Rights Commission. You're yeah, an important. I'm here, I'm here representing you, the majority leader. And you are an important person in your own right as well. So we thank you for your contributions. And it's Corazon's birthday. And it's birthday. Okay, maybe maybe we'll sing that afterwards. Uh, we. We have former Councilman Mike Sabatino, who also continues to work here for, in the administration. And another former councilman who goes back from when I started working in City Hall, Robert Stoff, who's here, <laughs> continuing to do work with the council. We've got a couple of commissioners. I see, I see Steve Sansone, who I have to acknowledge first, since I'm on his parks board. So uh, thank you, Steve. <laughs> Lee Elman, I think you're one of the, uh, the candle lighters here. But uh, Lee heads our uh, planning and development. Uh, Sarah Brody heads the downtown bid. She'll also be a candle lighter today. And um, what? Police oh, the police dean, right? Uh, um, oh, the police commissioner is here. Chris, Chris is here. So uh, welcome. Okay. Shelly is next. Oh, okay. You're up. You're up, Shelly. Thank you, Chuck, and thank you, uh, Rabbi. Thank you so much. I was saying on the way over here to my sister what a joy it is to come to this every year and to hear the rabbi always tell us something that we don't know, something new that I never thought of before or I really never knew in my own Jewish heritage. But this is special Hanukkah 
for us because this concept of light, lighting a candle, being aware, seeing more is so essential. And Hanukkah reminds us of the power of light. And just as Chuck talked about the power of remembering how this issue of right now is so important to us because of what's happening in Ukraine and our Ukrainian brothers and sisters for so many of us in the Jewish community. The power of light, of lighting this candle, of reminding ourselves, open our minds, see more, do it in a loving way, that is one of the things I take from Hanukkah. So it's an honor to be here with my colleagues in government and to celebrate together. And I just want to give credit to the mayor and the city of Yonkers and the council for always having this open door. As the mayor says, this is our house. Everyone is welcome, and today is a special, special day for the Jewish community. Thank you. I guess you should pass the baton to the Senate leader, Andrea Stewart Cousins. Thank you so much, Chuck. And I don't think I could say it any better than obviously the rabbi has said it, the mayor, uh, my colleagues, uh, Senator Mayor, but uh, this is the darkest uh, day of the year. And so how fitting it is that in the darkest of times, we stand together lighting the light, uh, not only a light that reminds us of faith, a light that, that, that gives us hope, the light that tells us that if we do the right thing, uh, by the grace of God, the right things happen. And so I think that's the hope that, that really is part of this season uh, in all of our traditions. And it is one that I hope we will carry into the new year. Just keep lighting the light. Happy Hanukkah. Our deputy uh, commissioner from DPW, Jason Baker. Hello. <laughs> we robbed him of a candle today, but okay. uh, we're going to be in just a moment. We're going to be starting with the uh, lighting of the candles. The first candle. We're actually going to give uh, the honor to Officer Dean from the Third Precinct to light. We specially chose Officer this year to begin the lighting of the candles uh, for the great loss that we just had with uh, off Sergeant Officer Frank. Just lost him to in the car accident, and. Uh, according to some, he has joined us in the past years. We have to go and verify that when we had the parade. Uh, regardless, this is, people that put on uniform every single day going out and protecting and making sure that we can practice freely, this is something very, very special. And how do you chase away darkness, as our senator just said? We chase away darkness just by adding light. It may be the darkest day, but how do you, how do you take that away? You don't have to do too much prep. All you do is turn on the light. More light you bring in, automatically darkness goes away. So let's begin, and then we're going to have a few more, uh, uh, a few, uh, we're going to be hearing from a few more people right after the lighting. We're going to begin now with the uh, lighting of the candle. The mayor is going to light the shamash, the leader, the leading candle. Yeah. <laughs> we have, we have, we're doing the blessings, right? And he goes and rattles off the blessing just like that. Yeah. So like, there you go. Here, we'll put on the yarmulke. And we're going to start off with the blessings. Mm -hmm. There's two blessings. One you're going to do yourself, and the second one you're going to do. Yeah, I'm on the spot. Yeah. All right. Amen. Very shortly, right after the program, we're going to be having delicious food. This food is actually, uh, there's a few sponsors today. We'd like to thank them. So Jesse Friedman and Michael from <laughs> Azorim International and uh, Miraza uh, Towers, okay, the, as well as uh, Ari Stein from Springbrook Manor and Simon Cooper. 
So we thank you all, we thank them so much for sponsoring this uh, wonderful evening and the delicious food, which we're going to be seeing very shortly. Uh, and David we, and Tariq, we have to thank them. David and Tariq, that, that's uh, afterwards we're, we're going to be taking, we're going to be having our parade and we go over to the Machia Center and over there at the distillery we're going to be enjoying a whole other, a whole second party for today. <laughs> we're going to get there uh, soon. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to ask the, the commissioner if you can come up and just, we want to hear from you. <laughs> Uh, by all means, I, I love supporting the rabbi, uh, and I love supporting this community. You know, the rabbi was gracious enough to, to mention Frank Guadino, our officer that recently was killed. And uh, now we're focusing on a celebration of light and hope, and I think it's a terrific thing. And if Rabbi Mendy uh, supports it and leads it, I'm with him. He, Um, you know, you know who never gets thanked? I mean, a lot of people, but I'm not going to go down that road. <laughs> Everybody that actually came out, you have people affiliated with different congregations and people that are unaffiliated just came. And each one is, you know, we want to thank every individual. We have uh, uh, David Baker from Northeast. We have from Lincoln Park. We have uh, David uh, Muster from Yershul, right? Park Hill. And there's so many different, you know, it's just coming together, everybody. You even have people from here from Chabad Yonkers. <laughs> so welcome, welcome. Uh, Simon, we did make mention of you, so don't get upset if you didn't hear your name. Uh, you just came. Thank Lucia. Uh, Lucia always arranges this Rosh Hashanah, six months in advance, or Passover time. So also today, I would like to ask uh, Dr. David, our anesthesiologist, who uh, I heard him say a few words the other day. I said, this must be said over here. So I'd like to, I'd like to ask him to come up and give us a few short words. Yeah, David Duliolo, County Legislator. David Duliolo, can, uh, County Legislator is here. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Thank you, Mendy. And uh, Mr. Mayor and distinguished guests, it's my honor to get up and say a few words. It really is a pleasure to see all of you here for a public, menorah lighting because it's a very special and significant event and this is why um, it wasn't more than a generation or two ago that if you were a Jew living in parts of the world in Eastern Europe in Poland Ukraine and the former Soviet Union you were not allowed to light a public you were not allowed to light a menorah in public they were forced to bring their Judaism into the home in secrecy and in privacy. And the tradition of the menorah is that it is lit traditionally outside of the home because it brings the light of Judaism to the outside world. Unlike when you light a Shabbos candle, that brings the light of Judaism into the home. The menorah is a public celebration of the light of Judaism. So. It was in the 1970s in this country that the, the Rebbe, Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the seventh Lubavitcher Rebbe, encouraged every Jew to make a public display of the celebration of Hanukkah. And in 1975, in two different locations, in San Francisco and in Philadelphia, some Hasids got together. <coughs> In San Francisco, they were Holocaust survivors. They were descendants of Holocaust survivors. They were survivors of Stalin's gulag. And they erected a giant menorah. And in Philadelphia, they erected a smaller menorah made by some yeshiva students. And they publicly celebrated the lighting of the menorah. And that caught on in subsequent years, such that all around the world now, you we're able to publicly display the menorah and celebrate our Judaism, identify with our Judaism, and be proud to be a Jew in public and no longer hide it. And as today is the darkest, or the shortest length of light, uh, daylight of the year, it's apropos because a little bit of light dispels a lot of darkness. And there's still a lot of darkness. Um, there are still there is one country, at least, that where you can't practice Judaism, 
and you would be punished. Uh, there's no outward display of Judaism. So we have to celebrate the fact that we have our freedom and our liberty to do such a thing. And when we write, when we light the menorah, we're not really lighting it just for ourselves. We're lighting it for every single Jew that never got the opportunity to light the menorah in public. So it's a wonderful display of our freedom of religion, our freedom to celebrate religion, and the lifestyle that we enjoy. Um, so eat some donuts, <laughs> eat some latke, and uh, celebrate this. Freedom's not free, and we're never more than one generation from uh, freedom. Uh, it can be taken from us very quickly. And I want to tell you about a Protestant priest in Weimar, Germany in the 30s and 40s. His name is Father Neimoller, and he was a Nazi sympathizer. But when the Third Reich came to power, he changed his sympathies, and he became an outspoken critic of uh, the Nazi regime. And he was imprisoned until the end of the war, and he wrote this piece of prose. And I'm sure many of you heard it. It's called First They Came. Yes. And it goes thus. First they came for the communists, and I said nothing because I wasn't a communist. And then they came for the socialists, and I said nothing because I wasn't a socialist. And then they came for the trade unionists, and I said nothing because I wasn't a trade unionist. And then they came for the Jews, and I said nothing because I wasn't a Jew. And then they came for me, and there was no one to speak for me. Let's celebrate our freedom. The only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Whether you're Jewish or whether you're not Jewish, you have to celebrate the fact that we can publicly light the menorah. Thank you. How many years do you think Dr. Cavello spent in yeshiva? Zero. <laughs> a nice, good Italian boy. <laughs> but he, he studies so much Torah, and this is uh, amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, is there anyone else speaking? Uh, no, uh, just, we, just so we know, we have Brenton, who is the chief of staff, the city he council majority leader, Tasha Diaz. So. <laughs> Dr. Thomas, thank you for coming, very nice. Right after, we're, we're gonna conclude, we're gonna conclude with a, with a, um, we're gonna conclude with, with a song, and then everyone is uh, welcome to go and enjoy the wonderful things that our great sponsors of this evening uh, has put out a very nice spread. And then we're gonna make our way to the, to our cars and mount the menorahs in our cars and drive through the city, through the streets of Yonkers and bring some more light. So again, thank you everybody, everybody, everybody for joining. It's been wonderful. And let's conclude. Oh, dream, oh, dream, oh, dream.